Did you know that 84% of YouTubers at some point in their career need a pie chart? Did you also know that if you add a fancy graphic like this, people are much more likely to believe you even when you're lying? Today using Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own pie chart just like this one to use in Final Cut Pro. But if you wanna skip all the steps of building your own pie chart using Apple Motion, then I really, really recommend that you check out Envato Elements, the sponsor of today's video. Now really quick, I have an amazing giveaway from Envato Elements to give away an entire free year. So stick around to the end of the sponsored segment to find out how you can enter. So rather than building my own pie chart, I could just go on over to Envato Elements to download an amazing template for Final Cut Pro. Here I am on their website. I'm gonna go to video templates and locate the Final Cut Pro section. In here, I'm just gonna type in pie chart. And now you can see that there are all these different pie charts I can download. So I've gone ahead and installed this pie chart into Final Cut Pro. In here, I'm gonna use this really cool one that has this Twitter icon in the middle. You can see how it's already blurred at the background, but if you don't want that, you can actually just totally remove the background blur. So if I push play, you can see there's this really nice dynamic graphic that pops up and it has the Twitter icon. I could change that icon over to YouTube. Then I could change the value. So let's go ahead and change this over to 84%. Then we could also change the color. So maybe I want it to be this orange color. And so now if we push play, it has all of those changes applied to this really nice graphic animation. Not to mention all of the nice on-screen controls. There's also the ability to rotate it in 3D space. So I really, really recommend that you pick up Envato Elements if you are a video editor of any sort. And there is a seven day free trial if you follow the links down below. But not only that, the people over at Envato Elements were nice enough to give me a license to give away for an entire free year. So here's how you enter. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, then comment on this video some really stupid statistic. I don't care if it's true or fake, just some hilarious statistics so we can all laugh down in the comments. Once you've done that, you'll be entered and I'll be announcing the winner here in a couple weeks. Now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut title. You can leave these settings at whatever you typically edit and we will push Open. Now that we're in motion, we can delete the title background and the type text here layer. From there, we can come down to where our shapes are and create a circle. I'm gonna click and drag and hold Shift so that it is perfectly symmetrical. Then from there, we can jump on over into the inspector where we can disable the fill and we can change the color of the outline. For now, I'll just set it to white so it's really easy to see. Then we can go on over into our properties and find the position settings. We'll click this down arrow and select reset parameter. So now it should be directly in the center. I'm just gonna call this circle one. Now that we have our first circle, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this with Command D. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that to be Circle 2. We can go into our geometry settings and change the radius from 284 to maybe 325. Then we can go into our style settings and change the width. We'll get that looking nice and skinny. Now that we have that, I'm gonna actually push K to create a clone layer of that outer layer. And this time we'll shrink it down in scale so that it's on the inner side of the circle. From here, let's go on over into our library and locate our generators. We're gonna wanna add a number generator so that we can have some specific numbers in the center. So we'll just go ahead and locate the numbers generator here and we'll just click and drag that into the original group. From there, we can go into the inspector and locate the generator settings. Let's go ahead and disable animate. Then from there, we can change the format from numbers over to percent. If you want decimals, you could actually click and drag this slider. So now if I scale up our text here and the format settings, you can see that it has a decimal percent amount. I actually like it without, so I'll click and drag those down. Now that we've done that, we can go into our format settings and we will set the alignment as centered. We'll go into the property settings, click this down arrow and reset the transform properties. Now we can just actually click and drag that down. And in our text generator settings, we can scale this up. So with the number selected, we can go into the generator settings and find the value parameter. We'll click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we are going to link it to this original circle one. Now that we've added that link parameter, we just need to go into the compatible parameters 
go to object, shape, outline, and set the last point offset. So now you can see how that has jumped the number up to 100%. If we click on the circle one, you can find the last point offset here at the bottom. So as I click and drag, you can see how that is adjusting accordingly. Now with the circle selected, if you like these rounded edges, you can leave them just as they are. But if you wanna change the end caps, you can come here, find the start cap, change that to none and change the end cap over to none. So now they'll just have hard edges. I actually like how it looks with the rounded edges, so we'll leave it as it is. Let's go ahead and select the circle two and we will find the last point offset. We'll click on the down arrow, add a parameter behavior and we will link it. Then from there, we can link it to circle one. Now motion's gonna already know that we want to connect both the last point offset to each other. So as we adjust the last point offset here, all the numbers should be adjusting accordingly, as well as the animation of the outer line. Let's go ahead and scale down the numbers just a little bit. They're a little bit too large when it hits a full 100% just like that. So now that we've done that, we wanna make it so that as we change these values in Final Cut Pro, it has a nice little animation at the beginning. So with circle one selected, let's find the last point offset and set that to zero. Then we can click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we are going to select ramp. From here, we can set the end value. So whatever this value is, is where the animation will end. So let's say we want it to end at 84% because that is how many people need to create a pie chart at some point in their life. Now that we've done that, we need to go down to the end offset and we need to adjust the offset of this animation because if I push command eight, we can see that the animation is playing out over the entire duration of our clip. So what I need to do is click and drag the end offset until it's about a second long. Now, unfortunately we can only go up to the value of 100, but if you click and drag on that value, you can actually adjust it much further. So that will be right at one second. So if I play it out, we'll have this nice smooth animation of this circle being drawn in. So let's go ahead and add in a little animation for these numbers to pop in. Let's go to the property settings and find the scale value. We'll click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select overshoot. From there, let's set the start value to negative 100% and that will actually negate the full 100% value that it was set at. As it is, it's growing in very, very slowly. So again, we need to set that end offset value. So we'll go ahead, click and drag that end offset until the animation is as short as we want it and we want it to last about a second. So now the text is popping in just like so. Perfect, so now let's go ahead and publish these parameters so that they are over in Final Cut Pro. So going into the ramp value, this is gonna be important that we select the ramp and not the last point offset. We can find the end value here. Let's go ahead and click this down arrow and push publish. Then from there, let's go into our circle settings and we'll publish the outline color. So I can publish this brush color right here. We'll go to circle two and also publish that color. Then we can go into our numbers. We could publish stuff like the font and size if we wanted to. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple though. We'll go into the appearance settings and publish the face color. Then from there, we can go up to our project settings and you'll see that we have all of these different values, but it's hard to understand what they are going to affect. Let's go ahead and change the name of end value just to value. Then we'll go to our brush color settings and we can set this to circle one, double click on this for circle two and double click on this for text color. Now, one last thing we need to do before we publish this over into Final Cut Pro is we need to find the end of this animation being right here. Then we'll push Shift M. That's gonna create this green marker. We'll double click on that and change it from type standard over to build in optional. Now, this is gonna be important if you want the animation values to stay the same. Before, Final Cut Pro would automatically adjust the animation to fill out the length of time. So if we had put this pie chart in at 10 seconds, and then we stretched it out all the way to 50 seconds, the animation would stretch out five times longer and become much slower. So by adding this marker, it's telling Final Cut Pro that the animation needs to take place over this one second period, thus maintaining the animation speed. Now that we have that green marker, we can go ahead and push Command S. That's going to allow us to save and publish it into Final Cut. 
and we can change the name of this to pie chart. We could set the category to whatever we like. I'll go ahead and just throw it into tutorials. You can add a theme if you like and then push publish. Now let's go ahead and jump on into Final Cut. We can go into our titles and locate our tutorials and in here we should see our pie chart that we've just created. I'll click and drag that onto our timeline and just like that we have this animated pie chart. But the best part is, is we can go into our title inspector and we can adjust the actual value. So if we want this to show 50%, we can go ahead and allow that to play and now it'll jump up to 50% or likewise 25% whatever you wanna do with this value. So that is how you can build your own pie chart for Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. Don't forget to check out Envato Elements. There's a seven day free trial down below, as well as don't forget to enter in the contest to hopefully get Envato Elements free for an entire year. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.